So our slide is um, titled From Carbon Coding to Continuous Delivery. And it's, um, it's really a story about, uh, it's a personal story for me because it's where, uh, where I started uh, many years ago and up to where we are today. And um, these are the companies that we represent. Uh, I'm Jimmy and I'm one of the partners at uh, Angry Creative. Um, and it's a no-show. Uh, Angry Creative is a WordPress bureau. We do about roughly 50% of what we do is uh, um, maintenance gigs. Kind of, um, it's, it can be sites that we've built, or it can be sites that um, people like you build and then come to us and say, hey, uh, we need this uh, maintained because um, we don't want to do it. So that's what a lot of what we do. And the rest of it is, uh, yeah, enterprise gigs, I guess. OK, so I am uh, Tony. I am the CTO uh, at uh, Sinosho. Sinosho is a, a hosting company. We do mainly uh, large enterprise uh, clients. Uh, and uh, we do um, hosting from uh, basically all the layers up to the application layer, and sometimes including where Angry Creative takes over. So um, to understand what we do today, one needs to understand how things once were. And the tale of uh, Angry Creative is divided in uh, three paradigms. It's cowboy coding, version control, and continuous delivery. Uh, 2005, I was introduced to WordPress. And I thought, hey, this was awesome. Uh, this is, uh, this is um, and I st I've started Angry Creative from my dorm room, and this picture here uh, is an actual picture of me and my mom uh, in my dorm room. Um, and uh, I've um, grown some hair since then, as you can see. Um, but from this dorm room, I, um, I convinced people to, to use WordPress because, uh, well, it's, uh, it's great. It's a great tool as you all know. Uh, it wasn't that great then, like 1.5 or something. Uh, anyone work with 1.5? Yeah, there's one. You know the struggle. The struggle is real. Uh, to be honest, everything was a struggle um, uh, until custom post types, uh, in my opinion. Um, but, but, but yeah, I worked from my dorm room, and I, I did design, mainly. Um, made cool websites, you know, because that's what, what people um, paid me for. And that's what they understood as well. And the process, it was really simple. I, uh, I mainly developed on a subdomain that my um, web hotel set up for me. And, uh, and I used that as, as some kind of a staging environment, kind of. And I just uploaded the FTP files, and um, um, more or less edited them on the right there and, and there. Um, and and if um, if something, uh, and then when I released it, I would just uh, I just uploaded it into uh, into production, and yeah, done. Give me my money. And um, and this was, I mean, looking back at it. It was thinking on what types of clients I work with. It was it was a super super fast process, uh, and well, uh, I I I didn't need to to know a lot to be honest, and and and, and looking back, um, I mean this was a few years ago, um, kind of. So so um, I mean that process kind of worked for that client. I mean my the sites I did were. Uh, um, well, uh, let's just say that today we have a few extra zeros uh, at the end of the price tag. Uh, on the, yeah, um, they were cheap, but it went fast. Um, but you know, um, I was young and I really needed the money. Um, the next paradigm was version control, and uh, the company a few years later it grew and uh, we became a few more. 
and it became apparent that uh, um, co cowboy coding in scale is a really bad idea. Um, but, but here we use Git together with uh, uh, a local em environment like MAMP. And um, well, first off, we, started tr we tried working with FTP and it did not work. Um, it was, we had some glorious explosions. Has anyone recognize this? Anyone? Um, no? Everyone is, yeah, I see some hands there, yeah. Glorious explosions. So don't do that. Learn from my mistakes. Um, and we had a lot of other problems. I mean, sure, um, but when we used um, we used MAP, but there were there were still um, it, w it was a lot better because we didn't fight over. Hey, I'm putting my things into staging right now. Oh no! Hey, what are you doing? You know, because everyone could work on the local machine, and and we could kind of put it into staging, and then we could use Git to to put it online. Um, and and yeah, by not using uh, production as a development environment uh, and not hot fixing stuff uh, in straight into production, it created a lot less risk in the daily work. Um, instead of uh, uh, running around and screaming and crying and having our clients always uh, mad at us, uh, it worked out all right. So Git, use it. Um, and uh, we also got some uh, accountability. Um, because you could actually, you know, you could see who did what code, and and um, who merged what, and so we could kind of backtrack. Ah, here it is, um, and that almost worked, except from for when people logged into production and um, pushed their things from there. So um, Git or Bitbucket that we used, uh, our first GitHub and then Bitbucket, it said just. Roots pushed this, and then it was someone. We didn't know wh who. Um, production was not um, s very similar to development environments. We, we, a few years later, we switched to, uh, to Vagrant, and that was cooler, a lot cooler. But, but it was such a hassle. It was so much work. Um, and and um, um, and uh, since everyone had logged into production, uh, we had some, um, yeah, we still had some major mistakes, to be honest. Because uh, uh, if everyone has access to production, um, things will eventually explode. Um, and that's, uh, that's a relative, usually a bad thing. So we wanted to push um, to the next level, but we hit a dead end. Uh, we needed more infrastructure to get uh, faster and better. And uh, that's when we decided to um, let's make a hosting company, more or less. So we started Sonosio. Um, and that brings us to the third part of our paradigm. Uh, this is some of our staff, some of them are here today. I hope you are you here in the cloud, crowd. No? Um, and, and um, today we we've kind of switched. I mean, the client today is not at all um, what I had in my dorm room. It's a totally different client, and totally different clients uh, require different stuff. And this is how we do it. Thank you. So um, the idea is that um, all code uh, begins it, its life in, in a repository of some kind. Uh, we, we used Git, so that was a pretty easy choice. Um, so um, what happens when somebody pushes something into a repository uh, is that we have a continuous integration engine with, which builds um, things like packages using Composer, uh, CSS using SAS, and, and uh, all these kind of nice development tools that you're, you're used to having in your local dev environment, which um, takes uh, easy code and produces, uh, well, Worse code, um, so we build that in the in the CI engine as, as a container. So the the result of that build is then pushed in, in, into a tag, and that tag can then be uh, deployed in, into uh, staging or, or production or or whatever. The important thing is that the, the tag stays the same or the content of the tag uh, stays the same. 
so that means that the, the build process is, is not variable. Um, so that means that there is actually no real need to install build tools or, or testing tools and, and so on on production servers. They, they're ju just not present there uh, because we deploy the result of the build uh, as a part of, of a version controlled uh, process. Uh, the same thing goes with uh, things like uh, arguments files or environment files that are specific to, to a, a, an environment. Uh, for example, when it comes to the database, user credentials, uh, uh, and so on. All these things are version controlled. The build process itself is actually version controlled uh, as well, uh, because we have the, all these the sets of commands that, that uh, do the actual build process. Uh, those are, are present in, in a CI file that's located in, inside the repository. So on top of this, you actually need a very easy local dev environment. So uh, this local dev environment, we, we sort of figured that we could automate most of this. Uh, so so I, I'm just going to do a quick uh, demo of it here. And uh, well, uh, so um, you can see me here. Uh, running the setup script for for the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for sites, and the thing I, I do first is that I, I type in the repository uh, with my credentials, and it will check out that repository, and after that it will look into the argument files or the environment files in that repository, checking that hey, which uh, uh, which live environments and, and so on, which site name it is. And then it can search in the asset server that is the latest nightly backup, and it downloads automatically all the latest uh, assets, which is upload, and the database from that server. So then it takes those, reads those entirely automatically, and uh, once it, it's uh, done that, uh, it will uh, run a, a couple of scripts, which generates the, the Apache uh, virtual host. Um, so, and, and after that, um, it will run a, a series of tests. And these, these kind of tests are, are uh, for doing composer packages, uh, for uh, SAS. Uh, if you have NPM, it does that. If you have uh, Yarn, it, it does that, uh, and, and so on. You can use any tool you like, and it will just check if the metadata file for, for that tool is present and, and run that tool. So the after. You can see it actually checks out the, the composer pa packages uh, here. And so off, off the, all these kind of build processes are, are done. Because we know the original site that this was pulled from, and we also know the destination that we are placing in the dev environment, we can figure out that we're going to need to run a search and replace on this domain. So it actually automates the whole search and replace uh, process uh, as well. Uh, so you don't need to think of that um, at all. Um, and you could see it. Uh, you can see it uh, run that uh, in a, uh, just a moment. And so, um, once you've done all the, the necessary things to get the site up, up and running, we sort uh, sort of thought that it, it would be nice to have support for. Um, if you are a developer, you might not necessarily have a user that's in, an admin user in production. And um, if you don't have that, this thing will automatically add that for you just after you search your place. You can see that this is actually a pr pretty large database, so it's in about 200,000 replacements. Um, so we add an admin account for uh, um, that anyone in that has the local dev environment can use to just log into the site as an admin. You don't need to think about passwords or, or anything ex except that that's printed above. Uh, you also get which line that you need to add into your host file uh, in order to um, uh, to get uh, the site up and running. Also, on this client, we have um, we have um, uh, you can take the next one. Uh, oh. We are also experimented with um, a thing called overlayfs, and that means that we don't actually uh, we don't actually get all the assets. That we try to mount them because yeah. this this uh, site here that we just saw has 400 gigs of uh, uploads. And uh, uh, how many of you have uh, laptops with the 500 gigs uh, of, of storage? No one. Like, okay. Have you less than 500 gigs or or uh, yeah? 
okay, that you wouldn't be able to work on this. This way, you can you can just use the five gigs from uh, the uh, the database. Yeah. The pr problem is that when you have five sites of this, you sort of sort of have to get an external hard drive with multiple terabytes or maybe multiple hard drives to just to download the, the assets, and then it takes a. Uh, quite some time to, to do that. Uh, so we just mount the latest nightly backup as a, a, a read-only thing. And then we put an overlay on top of it, so it's actually writable. So you can do whatever changes you want in, in your uh, dev environment, and those will just be present locally because the backup is read-only. So what I'm going to de demo next is, is uh, the, our the deployment admin. Uh, and um, the, the idea is that uh, it should be simple to deploy something to live. This uses Capistrano as, as a backend, uh, but I, I'm not going to go into to the, uh, the backend. It's the front end that, that's interesting. Uh, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to just log into to the admin uh, and just type in my, my credentials, if we can make that happen. Yes. Um, okay. So. What it, uh, so the first thing you, you see here is, is a projects view, which is, you can see there's two groups called Sinoshio and Angular Creative, and those groups are, are mapped into Active Directory groups, which we use for, for permission handling. Uh, and uh, those groups are, are um, uh, that means that we can get the easy permission handling in total. Um, so uh, after, uh, uh, you can also click on, on a project, and in that case, you will, you will browse the, the actual project. This, can, this is usually a, a repository. Uh, and a repository ha has uh, development uh, and production em environments. So here you can see that this thing has uh, test uh, uh, staging, uh, live and, and, and CI uh, as uh, dev environments. You can also see the latest build that's deployed. And if you hover over it, you can see the commit message uh, for, for that deploy. You can also see uh, thing, uh, the deployment, uh, the uh, latest repository history for, for that uh, repository. Uh, so uh, you can sort of figure out what, what have happened there. So if I, I click on a, on a environment, you can see that uh, it, it lists, first of all, it, it lists the deployment history. We can, we can do full audits of uh, who has deployed what and which commands that have been, have been run and, uh, and so on. You can also check the details of a deploy, which will bring you the output of, of that deploy, uh, which was presented from Capistrano. This is just a demo, so you, you can't actually see any, any real data here. Uh, but well, OK, so if we go back then uh, you can see that the environment is locked. And th this lock is just a, a soft lock, really. It's a way of telling, from a de developer perspective, to tell someone that, it ha that, hey, I'm working on this. Please please don't touch it. So um, you can just click Override to override locks. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. And um, uh, once you do that, you, you will be present with a, a couple of choices, uh, where you can, first of all, de deploy the latest version of a tag. And that uh, uh, tag is, is, uh, can be, uh, is just a release tag. You can also deploy the latest version of a branch. In that case, you will get the branch chaser um, uh, to that lists all, all the branches in the repository. You can also de deploy a release that was previously deployed to any environment. For example, if you had deployed a successful release on staging, you can just reuse that release and deploy it to production. Uh, you can also deploy, deploy a specific commit hash, uh, if you are into that kind of stuff. Uh, you can do a rollback, to in, so that just rollbacks to the previous release. No, nothing fancy about that. The setup is for sysadmins for setting up new sites. Update the assets and DB. This is a bit interesting thing, because it takes the same backup as you, you saw in the uh, previous dev environment, and copies that backup into the dev environment. Uh, the environment that you specify. You cannot do this on production, because that would be bad. Uh, but um, you can um, also do the, um, uh, because if the site is large enough, you might not want to copy the asset for just testing out a couple of things. So you can just do the update of, of the database instead. And that will just load the database, which is much faster if you're just testing uh, stuff. You can also do run WPCLI commands. So if I just want to do list all the users that's present in a the site, uh, then uh, yeah, I just type user list and, and do deploy. 
if you want to update WordPress, for example, if you have uh, or plugins and you, and you use Composer, you can just trigger a, a Composer update on that branch, uh, and uh, uh, this command will do it all for you. So the next thing you do is just deploy that, and you have updated WordPress. And it's pretty simple. Uh, if you have permissions problems, you can also reset those to, to default. So the next thing I'm going to do is, is just deploy uh, the latest release, and um, uh, then just confirm that I want to deploy this thing. Um, so the next, th next thing the deployment admin will do is, is just queue the job uh, and then start the deployment. And you can see it here that it was running and, and now finished. So that's the idea of how this thing works. So what about testing then? Well, uh, Selenium testing and, and unit testing is uh, run during the build process because we can use the CI engine, or well, well, maybe Ab use it, uh, depending on how you define it, um, to run these kind of things during build. So the interesting thing about having release tags is that you can choose whether or not to create a tag depending on, on a certain condition. For example, if you have a, a unit test that you really, really want to, uh, to run, then you can, um, and succeed, then you can, can choose to not create a releasable tag if that, um, the test didn't go through. So uh, that means that code that doesn't pass any unit testing will never end up in production because there is no tag to deploy it from. Uh, we also do something called uh, visual uh, comparison tests. Uh, the idea is that we take a, a screenshot of a, uh, a site uh, in a bunch of different resolutions because uh, you can use media queries in CSS and so, and so on. So it can, the site can render differently depending on your resolution. Um, and all after that, we um, we do an automatic difference thing between those, uh, and that in turn creates a, a, a screenshot that um, uh, that you can look on and you can see that wow, well, okay, th there is something wrong here. For example, in in this case, you see that there is a um, there's something wrong with the avatars on, on this forum, uh, and th this was a bug that we caught that um, there was. Um, if I remember correctly, avatars did display the default picture for not having an avatar when it really shouldn't. Um, the next thing is that uh, my view is that uh, test and staging environments uh, should only vis be visible to the right people. Uh, I've seen a lot of sites where you can sort of Google for a test environment, and, and so sometimes the test environment shows up uh, in the search results. Uh, even uh, with a higher rank than the actual production site, which is pretty embarrassing. Uh, and you can sort of fix this kind of issue by uh, doing uh, fixes in robots like TXT or, or a, met a meta tag with no index. But it's easier to just make sure that the deployment, the, the environment is never even accessible to somebody outside. So before we locked down all of our, our testing environments uh, behind the VPN, uh, we uh, had issues with uh, search en engines that uh, indexed them uh, because people are lazy and didn't really do the no index thing, uh, and also hacking attempts for those sites uh, because uh, customers generally don't want to pay for separate staging environments because, well, that comes at a cost. So um, actually explaining to a customer that, uh, well, uh, the staging environment was hacked, so your production site was also hacked. Uh, that, that's very interesting. Yeah, and please don't get into that if, if you have the uh, possibility. So the problem you run into uh, when you run, want to restrict access to production uh, is that people suddenly aren't able to troubleshoot their code anymore uh, because they don't have access to it. So how do you solve this problem? Uh, well, we decided early on that we need a way of visualizing uh, trends when it comes to performance issues and, and uh, so on, and also being able to search for errors. Uh, so uh, we took uh, all the logs and sort of collected them into a central syslog server. And we feed all the data into a system like Splunk, for example, or, or Greylog, or any of those uh, things, which can generate pretty nice dashboards uh, if you um, are into the, that uh, kind of stuff. Or you can search for, um, uh, for sites that have errors, for example, PHP warnings and errors and, and so on. So that means that developers actually get a pretty good feedback of when something goes wrong. 
uh, especially if, if it's happening very frequently. In this case, we will see a very, very large spike in a graph that says that, well, okay, something is, is really wrong with this. So overall, we get uh, fewer mistakes. It, it's uh, easier to set up a site uh, to do development on. Uh, testing is mandatory, which is, well, always good. Um, we have better security since everyone doesn't need root on, on uh, production anymore. Uh, we have uh, proper logging uh, and auditing uh, on all levels, meaning that everyone is accountable for th their changes. Uh, so that, that helps a bit. Um, the main problem with this is that it's a bit uh, more knowledge in intensive. Uh, you need very, when you hit an edge case, you need very senior staff uh, to deal with that kind of edge case. Uh, so, um, well, that's pretty much the only disadvantage. Yeah. So and also, um, there's a since we use Active Directory, it's um, single sign-on all the way through. So that's also good. You don't need to remember a lot of passwords for all these different service, ser services. There's actually more, but um, we don't have all day. <laughs> yeah, so do we have any um, questions or are you just like, whoa, that was a lot there? That's a question, awesome. Uh, wait, wait for the mic runner, please. Uh, w WordPress is pretty well documented. We all know that. Uh, what about your processes? What? Are they well documented? Are they well documented? Uh, well, uh, as, as we say in, in um, our company, there is a page in Confluence about it. Yeah, <laughs> there's a pretty much uh, a page in Confluence about <laughs> everything. Yes. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> yes, there is. Have more interesting questions? No? Um, have you thought about using other uh, continuous integrations platforms such as Team City, for example? Yes, uh, we did. And then we, I sort of thought that, yeah, well, okay, they, they do the job pretty good. But in, in this case, it didn't really fit our, our requirements uh, when it com comes to. Uh, deployments. Uh, we already have had a very good deployment pipeline, and, and we wanted to keep that. Um, the main issue that I that people ha have with that I have with CI engines is that there are the idea of that you can just push things into a branch and it will deploy into production. I think that's a very bad idea. You can configure it to not do that, but uh, it's still a little bit less um, easy to have than the deployment for admin, for example, because you have all these nice things that you want, for example, updated assets and DB and run uh, commands and so on, all in a single location. Also, like when you work with WordPress, it's like, um, say that you put one of you, um, you build a site and you put it in our lap, and are there any unit tests? Well, we'll probably no. Are there any Selenium tests? No, probably not. We'll have to build them. Um, and well, who's paying for it? We'll, we we can convince the client to pay for it in the end. Uh, so so um, we've had to really um, come up with uh, neat ways and um, to kind of automate stuff uh, and um, standardize stuff because uh, it's, um, it's yeah it's it's uh, you don't work test driven in WordPress. You, you more. You, it's more like behavior-driven development, more than test-driven. I have more questions? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, um, one of the, uh, oh, echo. Uh, one of the uh, great challenges of automatic uh, deployments of WordPress is the structural integrity of the database with internal IDs. And um, well, I guess you're familiar with the problem. Uh, do you have a solution for that in your, in your stack? Or do you, do you just cross your fingers? Or how does it work? Well, uh, we have actually had that issue um, uh, for um, just a site a few months ago uh, that I, I had to fix. Um, that was, uh, we don't re really have a 
really good system of, for handling that. It would be nice to have a way of just checking the integrity of, of database tables and, for example, the right collation, the right columns, the right indexes, and so on. But we, do, we don't have that in, at the moment. The closest thing that we have come is, is a plugin uh, uh, called um, WP Inspector, uh, which uh, sort of uh, takes all the uh, lo uh, it does logging, for example, if you are a, a user does anything to the site, but it also checks things like database collations and, and so on. So we have sort of thought into building that uh, or adding the functionality on top of it uh, to uh, deal with uh, things like indexes and so on. Any more questions? I can't really see from here. It's so bright. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, Tony and Jimmy.